So let's open our input grid again. And this time we'll show all of our piping segments. So I'm going to check on show for all piping. You could also do this from the show ribbon tab. Under show grouping, you can click, uh, click to show all points, components, or segments. And we can see the piping a bit more clearly if we apply some transparency to our pipe. So on my view ribbon tab, under setup, I'll select transparency. Your anchors are the only components that by default have some transparency applied. But we can select pipe here. And when we click OK, you can now see the pipe within the pipe. So with jacketed piping, it is helpful to apply some transparency to be able to see both pipes when you do have them all showing in the plot. Now with the transparency applied, uh, if we view this piping model from the top under view orientation, if we select top, we can see that we have, without even running an analysis, we have some what looks like issues over at our bends. All of our bends are currently long radius bends, but we want to change our the radius of our jacket piping uh, so that these bends line up a little bit better to start. So again, I'll open my input grid, and this time I'm going to select my bend tab. And I wanna to navigate to my bends on my E piping, my segment E piping, uh, which represents my jacket. And I'm gonna change the radius to a short radius bend for both of these. When I change that radius, you can just see that uh, everything fits a little bit better to start. And I also wanna do that for my jacket piping on my branch line. Again, if I rotate a bit and zoom in, they don't look great. They don't look like, the carrier doesn't look like it's sitting nicely within this jacket. So again, for my segment D bends, I wanna change these to short radius bends as well. And when I do that, everything looks like it lines up a bit better. So I'll go back to my default ISO view on the view ribbon tab under orientation. I'll select extent default ISO view. The next thing I want to do is I want to add insulation to the jacket piping and to the carrier piping that is not within the jacket. So I'll start with that carrier piping and I'll do that by coming back to my segment tab of my input grid and again unchecking the show checkbox for my segments D and E for my jacket piping. Again, I'm just going to focus on the carrier right now. And I want to close out my input grid so I can make some selections here of the carrier piping that is not within the jacket. All of this piping is different sizes. I have six, four, and three inch carrier piping. So I'll need to uh, change them according to size. So the first section of piping that I want to select is from C12 to C14. And I can do that by using my select ribbon tab. Under selection, I can select range. I could always use my control and shift command on my keyboard, which we did earlier, but now let's use this option. Now the command line asks me to select a from point and a to point, and I can select those points by simply clicking on them with my mouse or by typing in the point name. So I'll type in C12 to C14. And when I press tab, that selection is made. If I want to continue to select another range, I can at this point, or I can just click OK in the command line to finish my selection. With this section selected, this is currently a four inch carrier pipe, you can see in the status bar. And I wanna modify it to still be a four inch carrier pipe, but with some insulation applied. So I'll select my modify ribbon, and I'll under properties, I'll select pipe properties over range. 
I'm going to rename this to C4INS to show that it's still my carrier 4 piping, but I'm adding insulation. And I'll tab down to my insulation input, which will be 4 inch insulation thickness, and the material will be calc for calcium silicate which gives me an insulation density of 11 pounds per cubic feet. With that, I can click OK. Again, it gives me the note about uh, the flange or valve being over this selection, and I can just say OK. Next, I'll select my six inch section of piping, which is C15 to C16, but also on this side, C0 to C2. So I have two ranges to select. So on my select ribbon tab, the first thing I wanna do is clear my selection, and then I'll come back to select range. I wanna type in from point C15 to point C16, and I'll press tab to make that selection. Notice you don't have to change to select the reducer. When you select the two different sides of the reducer, it automatically then will apply to the reducer. And I also wanna make my second selection, so from point C00 to point C02, and again, if I tab off, that selection is made. And those are my two six inch carrier pipes outside of the jacket, so I can click OK in the command line. Again, I'll come up to my Modify Ribbon tab, under the properties grouping, I'll select pipe properties over range. And I'll make this pipe identifier C6INS. So again, my six inch carrier pipe with insulation. I'll tab down to my insulation thickness input and we're gonna keep the same insulation. So again, four inches with the material being calcium silicate represented by calc. I can click OK and OK. And lastly, I wanna do the branch line of the carrier pipe that's outside of the jacket. So this will be from B0 to B4. So first things first, I wanna to come to my select ribbon tab and clear my selection. Then I will select a range. I will type in B00 to B04 and press tab. That selection is made and it's the only selection here, so I can click OK. I'll come up to the Modify Ribbon tab, Modify Pipe Properties Over Range. This is a three inch carrier pipe, so I'll name it C3INS. Tab down to my insulation thickness, and again, we'll keep the same four inches of calcium silicate and we can click OK, and OK. All right, so again, come to Select and clear your selection and View, and click on Extent Default ISO View. And we can see the insulation that we just applied by selecting our Show Ribbon tab. And under Color Plots Grouping, we want to select Pipe Insulation. And this shows us the three carrier pipe sections that now have insulation applied. We also want to apply the insulation to our jacket piping. So let's open up our input grid. The easiest way to do this is all the jacket piping is assigned a specific pipe ID. If we open the pipe properties tab, we can see the three new pipe IDs for our carrier piping now has insulation applied. And we want to apply the same insulation to our two jacket pipe IDs. So you can either type them in or drag the information up just as you would in Excel. To apply four inches of insulation with the calcium silicate material applied for our jacket piping. And when you do that, if we come back to our segment tab and we now check show for all of our segments, you should see insulation throughout the entire piping model, like it is on page 26 of the workbook. So that's a nice way to check your insulation, but if you are done with that on the show ribbon tab, we can select reset show options to get back into 
input mode. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.